there, there's something else I want to talk about that, that was kind of in the update, um, and and it stood out to me because like when I first read about the company. My first thought was like, oh, wow, this sounds like some sci-fi dystopian thing. The company. So what is the company? (laughs) Thanks, Matt. The the, the simplest way to understand it is I've talked about what my sources point to are are, uh, uh, officials from uh, China's National Police Agency, the Ministry of Public Security. They could be officials from the PLA. They could be officials from the MSS, which, you you know, is the, the counterpart of the CIA. Very powerful Chinese official agencies concerned with counterespionage, concerned with espionage, are and can be involved in high-level triad networks. So these uh, gangs in China and Hong Kong that are running the world's money laundering, running the world's uh, at the top of the scale for narco, uh, human trafficking, weapons, uh, the company is a collection of the bosses of these triads and, uh, as my sources say, not corrupt officials, tasked Chinese officials, which uh, control, control the triads. It can't be said any simpler than that. That is the company. And in my updated chapter, uh, some new evidence uh, was buried in the, the BC anti-money laundering inquiry where the main, you know, just uh, admitted loan shark at the center of the Vancouver model in BC uh, sent an email to someone he was trying to extort a real estate debt from saying, uh, if I don't hear back from you about that 500000 the company will be very, very hard on me. And so it was another, another little bit of evidence to show that this person in BC that we didn't know was connected to what is known as the company, but we did know was connected to, you know, big police officials and PLA officials. He's saying, I work for the company. And uh, that's what it is. Uh, There was another good update. I found that this man who had somehow strangely been given, you know, some ability to to have a lawyer represent him in the BC anti-money laundering inquiry was arrested in Panama in March, 2022 with a fake Mexican passport on route from Colombia to Panama. So when you put that together with uh, what I what we know about the underground bank at the center of this story in British Columbia, which is laundering fentanyl proceeds into Chinese bank accounts and bringing cocaine up from coca- uh, Colombia, Peru, Mexico City, um, we can have some thoughts about what this loan shark was doing on that little jaunt down to Colombia and Panama with fake Mexican paper in his hand. So how how big is the company? Like how widespread is their influence? They would uh, they would be the top state sponsored crime network in the world, top of the scale for uh, methamphetamines and and fentanyl, and as I've indicated, you know, top of the scale uh, for for cocaine networks. Said, and I'm telling you, I, I talked to United States sources. The concern is very live that the company that is these high level triads with connections to Chinese officials, not only working with the Sinaloa cartel, but in some ways controlling, influencing the Mexican cartels because they're laundering all their money. Uh, You know, in those labs in uh, Mexico, uh, there are Chinese scientists found. So that gives you an indication of how influential and powerful this this protected state-sponsored crime network that we call the company is. And I think what's great about exposing this is, it, I think it gives people the idea of just, no matter what you know horrible like world issue you're talking about, a lot of it ties back to the Chinese Communist Party. It's sort of like the final boss for all of this. <laughs> you start off with a Mexican drug lord, goes back to China. It, you know what I was thinking about though, while you were talking about the Sam, you know, the... Antony Blinken, U.S. Secretary of State, recently said in a speech that he hopes the U.S. can work with China on fentanyl, right, on stopping fentanyl uh, coming into the country. You you think that's possible, Sam, that that we can work with China on stopping fentanyl? It's really interesting. Your your instincts or your sources are are great because I heard the exact same comment from a, a very connected U.S. source about that comment from Blinken. They said, who is he kidding? He knows as well as uh, as anyone in the 
uh, involved in this file at the DEA, CIA, that China will not cooperate. And uh, China, in fact, is using Mexico for, for their own ends. So I think what you're seeing there is some some politics where, you know, the Trump administration, for, for whatever they're known for, was was strong on China, was strong on the fentanyl networks. And uh, it came back a little bit the other way with the, the Biden administration. But there are still people in Washington and, and, and Virginia hopeful that uh, Blinken, uh, Mr. Blinken will, will see the light of day on, on that, that comment. Or there's someone higher up in the administration that somehow or another the Chinese Communist Party is funneling money to. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. So, and what I was thinking about when you're talking about the the these the company and their relationship with drug cartels is, you know, a couple of years ago I watched uh, Narcos on Netflix, which is the story of um, Pablo Escobar. You know, like he he basically got like elected to Congress in Colombia, like he was this like super popular guy, but like that was essentially limited to one country, right? His influence. And now it's like like the the big bad boss of the 80s is tiny compared to this massive company that's now like controlling all the the narco stuff in like Colombia and Peru and Mexico and Canada and and Asia like all around the world. It's just like this big mega boss that we've like added on top of that. I, I would agree a hundred percent. And you know the. When you look at the South American states, uh, again, uh, it's not a lot of people can get there when when you say that uh, the narco bosses are connected to some of those heads of state. Uh, I mean, uh, the DEA even made a case against one of them. Um, but now that we have people understanding, well, Russia operates it largely in the same way, money laundered by drug traffickers who are connected to the FSB. Uh, is responsible for, uh, you know, in some ways, funding these energy companies involved in trying to control Ukraine, Georgia, all these post-Soviet states. People are there. What's the next step? As as you indicate, can we get people to understand that the company is, uh, well, really, uh, you know, uh, the Politburo, some people would say, is the most powerful mafia in the world. So here's something I'm wondering, um, you know, like, China kind of took and expanded the Russian model. Uh, the Russian model is obviously still operating. North Korea is also a major drug dealer. Is is there any signs that like, you know, these authoritarian states like China, Russia, Iran are, you'd think they would start to bash up against each other and start to get in conflicts with each other. Is there any, any hint of that? I don't think there's a, I mean, uh, I don't have full visibility on that question except to say that, you know, my sources would say Hezbollah, uh, the company, uh, Russian mobs, they all find ways to work together when it benefits them. And, uh, you know, as, as we know, all of those countries, uh, if, if the bosses, heads of state are somehow either turning a blind eye or involved in those criminal networks, and as authoritarian states, the, the main enemy is the West, they will find a way to work together, both at the criminal level, the intelligence level, and the head of state level. So I don't see them bumping up against each other. And Ukraine is a good example. Uh, you know, there was some some hopeful, uh, sunny-minded people were, were thinking that China would come out uh, really strongly against uh, the war uh, in Ukraine. And we haven't seen that. I don't think we'll see that because there's a common there's a common cause, if not a common effort there. So what you're saying is despite differences, people can learn to work together. Yes, bad people can learn to work together and uh, good people can learn to work together too. I hope the good people get their act together. <laughs>